pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the veterans please remain standing so we may thank you for your service. So welcome to North Bay Patriots meeting. Happy New Year, everybody. It's our first meeting in the new year. I'd like to read our mission statement. I don't think we've read this for a long time. And just to remind everybody who is a member and of our mission statement and those of you who are new to us what our mission statement is, to promote, protect, and defend our sacred constitutional liberties, principles, and values through vigilance, education, and sacrifice with strength and guidance from our Creator. Now we'll move on to the panel. Uh, I'm Gary, Gary, you all know Gary. Gary's the president of North Bay Patriots. He's going to be the moderator tonight, the facilitator of the panel. So I'll let him introduce the uh, participants of the panel. Uh, I'd like to introduce Jeffrey Fawcett, PhD, be talking about your own health and fitness as related to smart meter. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, my background and why I'm here. Um, currently, I produce, co-produce a radio show, Your Own Health and Fitness, on KPFA, which broadcasts out of Berkeley. Our show is nationally syndicated, and we're the only, uh, we have been covering the issue of electrohypersensitivity longer than any media outlet, um, in, as far as we know, in the world. So the, the smart meter issue for, for me and my partner, uh, Lena Berman, who originated the show, has, been, uh, come in, ha has come out of that concern for the health effects of electromagnetic radiation. In addition to that, however, my PhD is in environmental economics, which is very much relevant to the broader issue of utilities and utility regulation. So this issue kind of combined both the work that I currently do in the area of health, um, but also in the broader area of the political economy of what this technology means, both from the standpoint of health, but also from the standpoint of a long, uh, uh, broad number of, of issues. So that's who I am. Um, and uh, where I come from, and um, the way that I wanted to structure my talk uh, is I wanted to ask and answer five questions. Uh, the first question is, why does pg and &E want to put a radio transmitter on the side of your house? The second question is, why does pg and &E and the CPUC not want to give you a choice? Third question is, what risks are you going to be subject to by having that radio transmitter on the side of your house? Um, fourth question is, what are the politics involved in this? And the, the last question is, what can you do? So let's start with, why does PG&E want to have a radio transmitter on the side of your house? The marketing campaign that PG&E is conducting is saying, oh, you're going to be able to control all these things that are going on in your house. You can, in fact, you can sit at work and instead of actually doing work, you can monitor minute by minute how much electricity your refrigerator is consuming. It's, it's actually better than playing, um, playing uh, uh, Tetris or uh, Solitaire or something else on your computer. This isn't why, it's, why they want that, that device. Um, first of all, the device is part of a planned development called the Smart Grid. What the smart grid does is it solves a financial problem that pg and &E and other utilities have. Um, as I said, in mid-August, when you all go home and you turn on the air conditioner, there's a demand made on the electrical system. And some generator somewhere has to come on and generate the electricity that your, your air conditioner is using. This is called, and it's, this is called uh, peak load which means that most of the time uh, things are humming along just fine, running your refrigerator, running your clocks, uh, whatever lights you have on, but then there's this big demand that comes through. And that only happens maybe 10, 
10% uh, of, of the time, 10% of the year. But PG&E and other utilities have to have the production capacity sitting, waiting, idly, to fire up to supply all those air conditioners. So what pg and &E wants to do is it wants to avoid, however it can, spending that money on those expensive, those expensive production plants. What it wants to be able to do is what they call level the load. It wants to spread out use of electricity so that the existing uh, production plants it has are going to be used more or less continuously. So yeah, this is all about a, a, uh, a financial problem that PG&E has to solve, and they are doing it in the context of um, upgrading or, or implementing this uh, smart grid. And the smart grid is intended to, uh, is a national program, and it is, it is uh, being directed from the Department of Energy. Um, and there are uh, many, many elements to it, but the ability to, to monitor and control the production and consumption of electricity is a key part. So right now the thing that worries, or that, that got me and Lena involved in this issue was the way in which uh, the, the plan for the smart grid has for monitoring what happens in your house is through a radio transmitter on that's attached to a metering device so that so that the electricity company can <coughs> charge you different rates during the day so that during those times when it is expensive for them to produce the energy they can charge you more money this is called um, time of day uh, rates so, so during those times, in the middle of the night, if you turn your air conditioner on, it will cost you less than if you turn it on at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's supposed to create a system of incentives that, it's, that will cause you to uh, insulate your house, put in double pane windows, do a whole bunch of things so that you don't have to use excess amounts of energy. That's the story. And, and it's not on necessarily untrue, but in terms of the problem that it's supposed to solve, it's actually fairly minuscule. Italy has had a, a smart system in place for some time, and um, what they've seen is a 5% reduction in energy consumption. Not spectacular. Um, and oh, by the way, the Italian system uses wired connections, not wireless connections. So let's go back to this actual meter, that this, this transmitter that's on the, on the side of your house and how that's monitoring. Um, um, it, it's actually not one transmitter, but two. There's one transmitter that's pointed outward that's connected to other transmitters that's going to create um, uh, a, a matrix of, or, or a network of, of meters and other communication devices that are going to send all this information from houses all over back to pg e so they can see what's going on. There's another transmitter that's pointed into the house, separate transmitter um, that will monitor appliances, refrigerators, ovens, uh, any electrical device in, in, in the house. Um, and the, the, uh, the, uh, the sales pitch around why this is a good thing is that idea of, hey, you can monitor what your refrigerator is doing and turn it off so that you're not charged a lot of money and you know, odd things like that. Uh, but in fact, what it does is it gives PG&E uh, and other utilities the opportunity to literal and anyone else that PG&E either voluntarily or through um, through through uh, uh, being asked to, uh, asked to by a court um, can monitor what you are doing in your house. What and um, turns out that you can tell what appliances you are using. So that's what's going to be put on the side of your house. A thing that will will. Uh, record when you are when you're using what and how much 
and it enables PG&E to literally look inside your house. Turns out that appliance is now being manufactured uh, in, in five years will have to have uh, wireless connections that hook up to the smart grid. So you won't have a choice if you buy a new refrigerator in five years. It will have a, a wireless device in it that will talk to the meter that is expected to be on your house. And if you remove that wireless device from that appliance, the warranty is void. Um, so this is a very broad system that's being implemented here. You are being, we're all being um, welcomed into the bosom of the, of the smart grid. So that's why PG&E wants that electric transmitter. There are alternatives. Um, and maybe if we have time, we can talk about those. So why doesn't uh, PG&E and the CPUC, the California Public Utilities Commission, want you to have a choice? And um, there are two simple answers that, as you will probably understand, have their complications. But the, the simple answer is PG&E and the CPUC are on board with this technology. This is the answer to that problem that PG&E has. Of cons uh, and a broader, you know, the public mandate that the CPUC is overlooking of conserving energy. But from pg and standpoint, it solves that financial problem for them. Also allows them to fire uh, all the meter readers. Um, so they have the answer, and the set, that's, that's part one. Part two is they don't think there are any problems. So if they don't think there are any problems, what you think, doesn't count. Um, what risks do you face? Well, I already mentioned that the, uh, the, the, the risks from the, um, uh, uh, the, the microwave radiation that these things are going to use are considerable. And in fact, no one actually knows wh uh, what you're going to be exposed to. Because you're not going to be just exposed to the meter um, that's on your house, it's you're going to be exposed to all the wireless radiation that's emitted by the entire network. And in fact, um, I've just uh, in the last couple of days received a, uh, an email from someone who we've had on, the show, on our show several times who's uh, an expert in this area who's been doing modeling of these, uh, of what a the totally the system when when it's on what uh, what kind of levels of radiation people will be exposed to and as far as I can tell it will exceed FCC standards regulations considerably and FCC standards from my perspective are um, are are actually pretty bad in terms of protecting people from the, the effects there are additional um, risks associated with the, this technology. I believe you folks are going to be talking about the privacy issues and you can you can understand uh, from the description of how this how this device works um, how that could be the case. There's um, there's another thing that was exchanged in emails about security uh, security issues. Um, I have a uh, close friend who lives, lives uh, is a neighbor of mine, who um, his, his job is to protect the, the security of a network for an agricultural financial uh, corporation that's locally uh, based. And when he looked at this, he said, look, everybody who's, who works in my profession on this knows that you don't create a secure system through um, through wireless means. Um, through through the, the, the first case of, um, of identity theft occurred with, uh, I forget who it was, some, uh, someone, um, I forget what city, but someone set up a, um, a, a, a little antenna where you can monitor um, across from a cafe, and he was monitoring the signals of people coming in with their wireless laptops, 
and typing away and hooking up to the internet and going online and doing financial transactions and they just picked that information up and, and, and stole people's identity. So that was, that was the first instance. And believe me, they become more sophisticated. You may be familiar with um, this, the, this incident of, of, of papers, the secret papers being revealed and it getting, um, and uh, the, the papers being blocked by internet service providers. And that angered a group of hackers to the extent that they, they uh, came very close to bringing down some of the biggest corporations in, in America. And, and it's still possible. There was an incident a couple of years ago in Texas about uh, a, a disgruntled employee using wireless uh, technologies to uh, invade and, and um, corrupt uh, the, the records of the, uh, of the, of the, um, the utility of people's accounts. So um, this is a technology which is not secure. Um, and, it's, and it's not just insecure to people who want to do harm, who want to do malicious acts. It's insecure uh, to someone driving by Okay, thanks. So someone driving by fires up their cell phone and could turn on your oven at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's possible. So, um, what are the politics of this? The politics here are CPUC controls the, the PUC. Uh, CPUC is appointed by the governor which kind of looks like, there's, there's a thing they teach you in um, economic school called regulatory capture, which is what it sounds like. Regulatory commissions, invariably in history, uh, become the captives of the industries they're supposed to regulate. So um, that's, as we've seen, in going to gory detail about why that's, uh, it's, it, it is a step that we have to go through, but it's likely not the, the final say. Uh, the CPUC does have to listen to the legislature, and the legislature does have to listen to us. So the politics, it, it, there, there, there are other layers to this. The federal government gets, gets involved, but the, the big players here are uh, the legislator, le legislature, the CPUC, and then the, uh, the, uh, uh, the utilities. And then finally, what you can do about it, I know these other uh, uh, gentlemen are going to be talking about some things you can do, but I want to, since a representative of, of, represent, or of um, Assemblyman Hoffman's district is here, I encourage you to talk to her um, and give your support to the work that he is doing. I also want to point you to um, Mark Lena, who is this area's state senator, who is now the chair of the Select Committee on Smart Grid Technology and who is also very interested and sympathetic to this issue. And he needs lots of support in getting legislation that will give us an option. It's quite all right, I was done. <laughs> Thanks for your time.